Hello everyone, today I'm going to talk about gallium and its uses today. Gallium is used in electronic circuits, semiconductors, and light emitting diodes, LEDs. It's used for high temperature thermometers, barometers, pharmaceutical, and nuclear medicine tests. So here we have electronic circuits, light emitting diodes. It's used for Blu-rays, so whenever you play video games or watch movies, you use gallium in the lasers. So here's um, Blu-ray gallium nitride laser diode in operation. And here we have high purity gallium destined for use in computer chips. So continuing on, here we have some information on gallium. Gallium arsenide computer chips on a wafer similar to silicon. Here you have the mineral bauxite. While not primarily a gallium mineral, contains impurities of this element and is the major commercial source of it. Gallium element number 31. Here you have gallium nitride. GAN, gallium nitride. It's IUPAC ID. Is gallium nitride. Its molar mass is 83.73 grams per mole. Here's some information on it. Gallium. For a tough shiny metal, I'm a little soppy. I melt so easily that I become liquid in your hand. For the same reason, I'm a bit of a joker. You see, a tablespoon made of me will literally disappear when used to stir tea. Paired with arsenic, I'm a hit in the electronics industry and may even come to rival silicon for the top spot. Gallium's native discovery was in 1875. Its density is 5.904 grams per centimeter cube. Its melting point is 29.76 degrees Celsius or 85.57 degrees Fahrenheit. Its boiling point is 2,204 degrees Celsius or 3,999 degrees Fahrenheit. Here we have some information on gallium. Again, with a melting point of just 84 degrees Fahrenheit or 29 degrees Celsius, the warmth of a person's hand is just enough to make the shiny metal melt. A liquid alloy called gallistan, which is used in medical thermometers, is made by mixing tin and indium with gallium. So here's a cube of melting gallium. So indium, gallium, arsenic, and phosphorus, they have valuable semiconductor and optoelectric properties. Some of these compounds are used in solid state devices such as transistors, rectifiers, and some form the basis for light emitting diodes and semiconductor lasers. Gallium nitride, or GAN, have been synthesized and used in electronic and optoelectric nanosystems, that is extremely small electronic devices that use light in their operation. So gallium was discovered in Paris by Paul Emile Lecoy de Bourbesan, also called Francois Lecoy de Bourbesan, was a French chemist known for his discoveries of the chemical elements gallium, samarium, and dysprosium. He observed the new violet line in the atomic spectrum of some zinc, yet extracted from a sample of zinc blend ore, or ZNS. He knew it meant that an unknown element was present. What Bois Bedran didn't realize was that its existence and properties had been predicted by Mendeleev, whose periodic table showed that there was a gap below aluminum, which was yet to be occupied. He forecast that the missing element's atomic weight would be around 68 and its density would be 5.9 grams per centimeter cubed. By November of 1875, Bois Bizran had isolated and purified the new metal and showed that it was like aluminum. In December of 1875, he announced it to the French Academy of Sciences. So though widely distributed at Earth's surface, gallium does not occur free or concentrated in independent minerals except for gallite, which consists of the elements copper, gallium, and sulfur which is rare and economically insignificant. It is extracted as a byproduct from zinc blend, iron pyrites, bauxite, and germinate. So the widely distributed at Earth's surface, gallium does not occur free or concentrated in independent minerals, except for gallite, which again consists of the elements copper, gallium, and sulfur. So gallium is silvery white and soft enough to be cut with a knife. It takes on a bluish tinge because of superficial oxidation, unusual for its low melting point, which is about 30 degrees Celsius or 86 degrees Fahrenheit. Gallium also expands upon solidification and supercools readily, remaining a liquid at temperatures as low as 0 degrees Celsius or 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Gallium remains a liquid phase over a temperature range of about 2,000 degrees Celsius or about 3,600 degrees Fahrenheit, with a very low vapor pressure up to about 1,500 degrees Celsius or about 2,700 degrees Fahrenheit, the longest useful liquid range of any element. The liquid metal clings to glass and similar surfaces. The crystal structure of gallium is orthorhombic. Natural gallium consists of a mixture of two stable isotopes, gallium-69, which is 60.4%, and gallium-71, which is 39.6%. If you add these two together, you get 100% of the variations of gallium. An isotope is an atom with the same number of protons, but different number of neutrons. Gallium has been considered as a possible heat exchange medium in nuclear reactors, although it has a high neutron capture cross-section. The metal gallium is stable in dry air. Somewhat similar to aluminum chemically, gallium slowly oxidizes in moist air until a protective film forms. On burning in air, it forms the white oxide Ga2O3. This oxide can be reduced to the metal when heated at high temperatures and with gallium metal at 700 degrees Celsius or 1,300 degrees Fahrenheit. It gives a lower oxide Ga2O, which is simply, as we see here, which is simply a variation of the oxidized form of gallium. Ga2O is similar to Ga2O3. 
It is not dissolving cold nitric acid or HNO3 because as with moist air, a protective film of gallium oxide forms. Here we have gallium oxide, the protective film, gallium oxide forms similar to the way that a protective layer forms in aluminum. Gallium does not react with water at temperatures up to 100 degrees Celsius or 212 degrees Fahrenheit, but reacts slowly with hydrochloric acid and other mineral acids to give the gallium ion Ga3+. The metal does dissolve in other acids to give gallium salts and it dissolves in alkalines with the evolution of hydrogen to give gallates such as GaOH4 negative, in which gallium appears in the anion. Gallium is amphoteric. Amphoteric means that it's able to react both as an acid and as a base. It reacts either as an acid or as a base depending on its circumstances. Gallium reacting with sodium and potassium hydroxide, seen here, sodium and potassium hydroxide, solutions to yield a gallate and hydrogen gas. The halogens attack it vigorously, so it reacts with the halogens. And here I have some information on potassium hydroxide and sodium hydroxide. So that was gallium explained in 20 minutes or less. Thank you everyone for watching. If you liked this video, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Have a great one.